sure that um, you have a certain freedom. Sorry, one sec. I have something to deal with. Based American, are you an atheist? If you're not an atheist, we're gonna have to put you back in the audience. If you can't come on the microphone, we can't hear you. We're going to put you back in the audience. We don't hear you at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, back in the audience. All right, Steve has had to step away for a minute. Okay, so right now we're looking for atheists to justify if they have any morally objective standards. So this is what this whole thing is about. So when before they can talk about any ethical thing that they want to assert, like uh, women's rights, pro-abortion, since many of them happen to be pro-abortion, before they can start talking about anything like that, they need to have something objectively binding they appeal to. And every time I ask them about this, they're never able to give me anything objective. In fact, more often than not, they admit that they're subjective. So they don't have anything ultimately to ground anything they say, which means they're um, whining about moral ethics is baseless. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm back. Sorry. I, I okay. had a home issue. That's fine. Okay, um, you were saying? Because I was writing uh, utilitarianism just because you brought the... Yeah, I was. No, I was thinking right, more. The third, fifth, um, where my nose starts. Yeah, about about the the judge quote about where it's, you know, your right to swing your fist ends where my nose begins. Um, uh, I think that's a moral standard that at least most atheists can conform to. It's it's more of a standard. Um, why? why is that the great standard? Why the egoist who says, I don't care what the judge says, I. Do what I want to do, not what the majority of people say I can't do. That's just a collective of subjective opinions. The egoist is not subjected or obligated to <laughs> toe the line of the uh, greatest majority perspective. Their yeah, his subjective, pleasure. his his idea of what morality is would be wrong under the atheist or atheistic no. without God. Um, no one's obligated to hold to that. Why not? We 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 have laws. We we could have, you know, Egoist, power right. behind those laws, right? To yeah, you know, an enforce egoist, those right. laws. Sorry? Right. So, of course, not merely by what it says. If it's not enforced, is it wrong? What what makes it wrong? Because an egoist is someone who is a you know out for their own pleasure, their own proclivities, not out yeah. to do what is what you stipulate as utility for uh, harmony of the society. Yeah. Just because a lot of people don't want to be punched in the face doesn't mean you ought not be punched in the face. The ego egoist is out for his own individual preferences, which is his own, not the greatest majority of what people stipulate. So it's not morally prescribable to him. He's not obligated to hold to that standard. That the society stipulates, is he? It is a completely opposite paradigm. Um, sure, you know, but I mean, you're, you're saying that you think are you? You're saying that just because what I, what I'm understanding is that you're saying just because he has a certain idea of himself, he won't operate by any morality. He's not obligated. No, his own, his own preferences okay, so... what he wants to do. I don't know how you call it moral. It's just his own proclivities, what he wants to do. He just does. That's all you have is just, you know, matter banging the other matter. There is no moving from what is the case to ought, that ought not be the case. All you can say is, that's what happened. What I, I, I think I would wrong? really, sorry. You, is it, did you have to finish that? Yeah, just where do you get where that's wrong, moving from it is to an ought. You can say what is the case, but where do you get this? It ought not be the case. Just because um, a lot of majority of people. Pro, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Their, I'm kind of confused by what you're saying there. Can you can you explain it? Because I you critique I critique the other guy when he said, "Hey, we just got society and laws." And you're just mm -hmm. taking that as saying, "Oh, we enforce those laws." Okay, but that I already critiqued that by saying the other guy that came in with that 
I said, that's a, just a collective of subjective opinions. The egoist has his own opinion. It's deemed equally valid in rel relativism. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's not one usurping another. If you do, you have to say how and to be by sheer force. Then it's not the moral prescription at all. It's merely I got the bigger gun or the threat of punishment. And we'll just say it's right, so you're under the authority of the despots. How do you know the despots are right? You either conform to the majority or you just out for your own. You're automatically deemed immoral because you don't agree with the majority. Just because something's in the majority doesn't make it right. That's an argument in that populum. It's a logical fallacy. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, I, I I hate to be that guy again, but I feel like I would have to ask, you know, under a theist standard, you um, you know, how how would the egoist be wrong um in saying you know what about you know what about me what what about what i want um instead of you know operating by a moral standard because just you know utilitarian the egoist is a moral relativist and they're both antithetical to christianity and we could show the absurdity of both of them we show egoism rule egoism refutes itself how utilitarianism refutes itself I can provide an internal critique to show they utterly destroy themselves on their own terms. Therefore, shown the transcendental necessity of the Christian worldview is proven by the possibility of the contrary, by the impossibility of its denial. So, I want to take the contrary to Christianity. No matter what ground you want to assert they're standing on, we'll show how they, you know, tie the noose around their own neck and hang themselves. We just point out when they did it. Um, so are you saying, or I shouldn't say, are you saying, um? Could you say that an egotistical person could be a Christian? No. I mean, they could have ego, ego, uh, sinful proclivities. Yeah, Christians mm -hmm. are sinful people as well. That doesn't make them for that standard, uh, you know, uh, morally justifiable. It's actually more reprehensible to God. That's why I, I all sinners. So yeah. Um. So I mean, any egotistical person who... I'm saying as a moral standard. We're just dealing with that on a secular perspective. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah pride, ego, you know, you know, an egoistic tendency would be prideful, prideful heart, you know, sinful you know, towards God. Yeah, we got to yeah. give God, God of the glory. Uh, we're sinful uh, of a reprobate mind. We're utterly depraved. Um, we're only saved by God's grace. Uh, the only thing we... We take our next breath, our next heartbeat, by God's grace. Yeah, it comes from his hand. Uh, we use that to, to spur in the very grace that's given to us by, by denying God or uh, the gospel that he's given us, you know, things like that. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Um Maybe, maybe, could there, under under that idea, could there even be a Christian? I mean, Christians we're, we're saved all... by God's grace. We're all fallen sinners. Christian, yes, but a Christian is one who trusts in Jesus Christ alone for his salvation by faith and alone in Him, mm -hmm. of His death, burial, resurrection, ascension into heaven. That you know, belief in is in His saving work saves us from the righteous judgment of God. That person relies upon Jesus Christ to save him from the righteous judgment of God, from the wrath to come. That person is a Christian. He's trusting in Christ alone by faith alone. Mm -hmm. mean well, I mean, I'm sinning. just, I'm, <laughs> you know. what I'm saying is, given our, per, given some proclivity to the se the seven deadly sins: ego, essentially pride, uh, gluttony, avarice, greed, all those, you know, nasty, nasty things. Um, from that, a person, Obama would God's sight. Yeah, they're all they're, they're sinful. Yeah, that could get in the way of you being a true Christian. No, a Christian doesn't mean you stop sinning. If you're thinking that, even First John, if John in First John says, "If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us." Mm -hmm. If we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Christian's not endorsing his sin. He knows it's utterly sinful, and he mm -hmm. will. Willingly repent of it. 
Okay, he has a repentant heart. God's given him a heart of flesh. He doesn't have a heart of stone anymore. The Christian struggles against his sin. The unbeliever doesn't struggle against his sin. Yes, he's convicted of it, as you know, John 14 says. He, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. Okay, they're convicted. That doesn't mean they're converted. Okay, all the world's convict, you know, uh, guilty before God, Romans 3. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. They know they're fallen guilty sinners. They do not desire to repent and trust in Jesus Christ. Nor I feel will like they I... ever do so unless God changes their heart. That person is a Christian who has a heart of flesh, who is trusting Jesus Christ alone for salvation. Mm-hmm. He's utterly sorrowful over his sin. Now, he does not uh, uh, want to do those things, or have, you know, you know, have a desire, but you know, when committed, you know, have a godly sorrow in his heart. That's a result of a regenerative heart. That God has taken out their heart of stone, given them, them a heart of flesh. That's the act of regeneration. Okay. And God grants the gifts of faith and repentance. So if a person is a true believer, they are a true believer, in spite of their sin. Because we're not saved by any works. By the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. If Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. That's Romans 3 and Romans 4. He goes on to say, to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. The believer is credited with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ obeyed that law perfectly. The law only shows us our sin. We can't wash ourselves with the law and justify ourselves before God. All our righteousness are as filthy rags in God's sight, as Isaiah 64, 6 says. Not all of our sins are filthy rags, all our righteousness. That's man on what we call his best day. God requires absolute moral perfection. That's only found by faith in Jesus Christ. That's how we can stand before a just and holy God on the day of judgment and be found not guilty account on the righteousness of another that's imputed to our account. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, reckoned to his account. That's how a person is saved from the righteous judgment of God. They're not saved by uh, keeping the law. Now, a believer is going to desire, because he has new desires, to want to honor God, give thanks to him, to outwardly obey the law, but the out- outward obeying the law, of you know, telling the truth, not murdering, and stuff like that, uh, not making idols, blah, 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 doesn't make him more righteous before God. He's only clothed in the righteousness of Christ. There's no going beyond that to a higher righteousness. He's already imputed with absolute perfection by Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That's why Paul says in Philippians 3, 9, he has a righteousness not his own drive from the law, but that which is, which is by faith in Jesus Christ. It's a foreign righteousness. It's imputed to his account. So that's what defines a Christian who is justified in the sight of God. They're declared righteous in God's sight by faith. By faith alone in Christ alone. Yes. That's the gospel. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like I also have to, I feel like I would have to fall back on, and that those are great points. Thank you for um, mm-hmm. all, all that info. Um, well, give me an opportunity to preach the gospel there. I want people to know <laughs> good news. That's why it's called good news. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's, it's good when you're not interrupted. Um, anyway, um, I, I I do feel like I have to fall back on the on the question of Hello? the ego. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate niggers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like I have to fall back on the question of can an egotistical person um, be a Christian as long as they, uh, what, what's the word? I've, I'm forgetting the word. Uh, you know, proclaim, proclaim their, their sin of giving in to egotism or the egotistical uh, mindset. Could, could they be a Christian? Well, just wondering, man, do you have an appeal to anything objective to ground anything or not? I was saying my my initial um, idea of of when I joined on here again was the quote by the um, Supreme Court Justice. I I still forget his name. Um, it it states that your liberty to swing your fist ends. That's where my nose begins, and I think that's a moral standard that um, that atheists can agree on. Uh, but... I asked about agreement. Do you have anything that's objective or not? Simple question. 
I think that's a pretty objective idea of morality, considering of you know your your right and where. How's it objective if that's not necessarily binding? What if you live in a chaotic society, like an anarchist society? Then that doesn't apply. Hmm. Um. But I I I think that you know, in an anarchist society where you, you know, you're getting murdered, raped, robbed, um, that is completely wrong. And the people in the anarchist society will... Based on what? You're saying wrong based on what? You got to have something... Based on, based on the ideal objectively of... Objectively binding. Mm -hmm, what do you have objectively of, binding to say anything's wrong? Your liberty ends where my nose begins. The idea, whose idea? Here, the idea of men? From, well, it's not quoting from, but it's just taking the utilitarian ethic. Yeah, and he, he, we were Mill arguing. On liberty, which just said, mm -hmm. hey, well, that which reduces harm. So that's why you're going to say, hey, your liberty on liberty is the utilitarian. Whatever decreases the harm of people or the great happiness principle, whatever decreases the, uh, well, Let's, before John Stuart Mill, you had. Ben, I just don't think you're answering the question at all. Yeah, it's it, critiquing the stare you're given here because you're just saying, "Hey, the Supreme Court justice said this." I go, well, "Where do you think a lot of this influx of American culture came from?" Other than a, a very influential document by John, John Stuart Mill called "On Liberty," if you read through it, and you're just regurgitating the same thing, just in different words. It's still the same standard, just saying, "Oh, look, you, your, your liberty here." Is, uh, ends where you know physical harm isn't then induced because you don't have the right to do that. Well, who says you don't have the right to do it? John Stuart Mill? Or just you know, a lot of people that agree with John Stuart Mill? I mean, the Founding Fathers took from a lot of different philosophers. I know, yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that, but that's what's what being proffered here. If you haven't read that, then, that's a major, major... Will you tell us there. if you have anything objective or not, man? Seriously. It's not an objective standard because I can critique utilitarianism like eight ways the next Sunday and sh totally shred it. That's not and like the stand on. That's that's why I brought it up. Just as an idea as an idea of what an objective morality standard could be. And he was critiquing it. I didn't say could kindly. be. I didn't say could be. What do you have something that actually is objectively a body I did. To and to? he's and he's critiquing it in, yeah. in front of me. You we're said... getting we're getting educated. So let's Yeah. Calm down. Yeah, that one's not working. <laughs> well, I brought a point one. It ain't working. Not all get to that. And uh -huh, and even he's, he's believe men me. were egoistic yeah. uh, at their core. So even you get a whole bunch of collective egoists together asserting a utilitarian standard, how you not how they're not out for their own interests and not the interests of the greatest majority. Okay, that's just two right there. The leaders would be egoistic, even though proper in a utilitarian standard, just to get their own way. Okay. Uh, subjective, uh, no, internally, you have a uh, problem of uh, quantity versus distribution. Or say the, if I can make uh, 100 people or you know, 50 people in this uh, text chat, uh, just a great amount of pleasure, but it's going to bring harm to, you know, uh, you know, 100,000 people in the U.S. or something like that, you know. Uh, well, you just you're right because it gave them just such a high quantity of pleasure. Doesn't that outweigh the harm that was given? Well, on utilitarianism, if the, if the pleasure... Tommy, Tommy, we already went over this with you before, and every time you engage it with me, you get shredded, okay? Uh, well, I okay. So you you, hey, you guys have talked about this before? Tommy. Well, it's on me. Yeah, it's on me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have, 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 I, have I spoken to you before, Omni? I don't, I don't know if you have. Well, no, I you have, but I don't think you remember. Wait, wait, oh, wait a minute. You're that guy. Yeah. I didn't know yeah, I spoke with you. Oh, then, okay. Yeah. You Wait, so can yourself, I, can I you answer your objections? I've, I've, been doing a ton okay. of reading. I've been doing a ton of reading about utilitarianism. I'm super excited to get into some of these objections. Can I respond to them? No, I'm answering this question. I'm giving a critique. I, I mean, remember. I remember. I, I, like I, 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 like I, I remember you now. So, and Seabass never heard this. Okay. So, uh, you have a quality distribution issue. Oh, there's yeah. more. There's more. And you, you can you can address them with Omni, and I'll listen. Okay. So you have a quantity distribution issue. You have uh, uh, dialectical tension intrapersonal, but also interpersonal. Not only in the person, 
because there's never anything asserted as this is objectively quantifiable. Here's the number of pleasure points. Here's the number of harmful points. Okay. Utilitarianism. Help me. Hold on, buddy. Oh, okay. sorry. Hey, you're not giving a get. I never heard you, and even in the previous three discussions we had on this, you never showed us what the objective point scale system is. Okay. Oh, well, so to measure the, the pains and, and yeah. Uh, so arms. so the yeah. So the objective point scale. So I think there is what? an objective. So I think it, there is an objective point scale, but okay, it's. I asked what it is. Lay it out. Cool. What do you mean? What it is? It's the amount of well-being. No, put some content on it. What con What other content do you want? It is the amount of well-being. Well -being. We arrive at it through phenomenal introspection hey, by hey, Omni, Omni, Omni. Hey, folks, for people. <laughs> you know, a bunch of in the, hey, Omni, Omni. Nice. I, I want the point scale. Say, here's the number of ticks on the point scale system. Of here's there's three pleasure points. There's two harm points. Who the hell is making this standard anyway? Well, that's why I want to lay it out, not merely yeah. who we yeah. say reduces the harm of well, how you define harm economic, emotional. Okay, you're, you're, asking, you're asking a ton of questions. Let me yeah. answer no, the no, first. No, no, first. No, because what you just do, you just throw out, well, just whatever reduces the harm of people. Well, wait. Okay, so to answer your first question about how we measure it, so there is, it is Which true. Which one? Which harm? All harms. Everything that detracts from the well being okay. of conscious yeah. creatures. Pick Wait, what, what harm do you want? They have the same scale? Yes, harms do, in okay, fact, have a scale? scale. If they didn't, okay, the scale is the amount of, what is the okay, balance of, the amount. is the amount of well-being minus suffering cost. Okay, show, Matt, show you the amount. Do it. Wait, wait, wait. We okay. want to hear some quantities laid out here. Okay, what, is it merely what, quantity? What quantities, are you, what quantities are you looking for? Oh, yeah, do you have a quantity distribution issue anyway? Okay, but you say, of what? If you're asking me to put a really if you're asking me to put a precise, you know, to put a precise numerical amount on the amount of pleasure that you get from certain things, I obviously cannot do that because it's hard to quantify. Person, okay, a person must uh, women in the dentist chair when they're under knocked out. I mean, they're not feeling nothing there, dude, and the guy's getting a lot of pleasure. Why is that wrong? Well, I think that huh? in most... Well? Yes. Well, well I was it. Focus. Do not detract. <laughs> Everyone heard what was directly brought up to you, so you're going to directly address you that. Cut point me off. I started. I, I said two you're doing, words. I you're mean, already, you, you, yeah, within that, you're already squirming away from it. I don't think I'm squirming. Okay, I I will I will tell you my my okay. So in the I give in you the illustration. I, yeah. Wait. Okay. So is the question that you want me to answer first the question? You're it, doing wait, it again. You ask me five hey, you want me to give the stop, hypothetical one? Stop, you want me to give the one about, about the stop, person in the armchair? This case is worth so much. And every question you're doing it in front of the audience for 56 minutes. No, I gave you the illustration. Stop interrupting. I, interrupting. I just gave you an illustration. Yeah, I molest women while they're knocked down in the dentist chair. He's getting a ton of pleasure. They're not feeling anything. Why is that morally wrong, Omni? You're supposed to be addressing that. Well, I think that when people... I think that when people molest other people, there is a it generally causes a lot of suffering. Okay, so, what heart, what's suffering? She's not well, suffering so at all. If the, if the person wakes up, they'll suffer, and as a result Where? of finding out about it, Where? The person might be no one knows pregnant. about it. Where? No one knows well, about it. No, but the point is that no. in the real world, I never said that in sexual intercourse. Wait, you don't pay attention. I said he just molests her. That's it. Right. So in the real world, if you molest someone when they're sleeping, there is a high chance that they will wake up and be left substantially worse off. Um, they're right, they're knocked out. They're knocked question. out. See how he squirms? This kid. Well, wait. Like, okay, so you it, cannot cook is to save your life, and you want to debate Christians all the time. I, I think I, you're I, a real hard ass. Wait. I go, look, I asked you a simple illustration yeah, here. I go, so, I'll give it your standard. Other than you just stipulate it's wrong, show us how. Okay, Matt, this is obviously <laughs> Omni. not productive. Hey, Omni, Omni. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, come, on, come on, come on, come on. Wait, wait a second. Hold on, uh, wait a second. Come on, let's not, let's not. I'm going to mute you. Everyone heard me bring up. You said I. you have an objective point scale. Let's see that apply to this illustration, sir. You're not okay, so doing your the, job. Okay, so in the illustration, you know I think. People get frustrated with you because you do not focus. Okay. You're the only one who gets frustrated with me. And right, right. Come on, so come on. Because you're blatantly in, squirming. In the point scale. So I think that the expected... Uh, show the points. Show the points. He has a lot of pleasure okay. points. She has no negative. Hey, do Where do you get the negative? 
Show no. us the points, Omni. And Matt, it is easier to show you okay. the points. Okay, Omni. Start right show, you don't shout uh, you're, if you don't answer the question, I will right. mute you. Think I'm kidding. Okay, I'll give you one more chance, kid. This is, this is okay. This is absurd. What? I am answering okay. the question. One more chance. It's easy for you to understand, Omni. Everyone heard me bring it up. I apply the same standard or the standard you stipulated, saying, "Okay, we got a point scale." I go, "Good, show us it." Okay, this so illustration. in order to figure out the precise point scale, I would obviously need more details about this specific case. I just told you. Okay, a person so if, if talks you them you out. If you stipulate, I, what, what, was unclear, really what was unclear? Was unclear hey, okay what was unclear? Hey, what was unclear? What was unclear with the illustration I gave? Well, I just so said, a person's locked out. Person gets a lot of pleasure from it, and the, the our person doesn't suffer any repercussions. Okay, so, Why is it so, morally wrong? So the, okay, we'll so hear a clear answer from you. Okay, so the clarification question that I would ask is: Do we have a guarantee that the person would not be harmed? I'm not sure how you define it. What do you mean by harm? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Do we have no? A they don't have the nothing. Do we just... have a, okay. Do we have a guarantee that the person will not suffer? What do you mean by suffering? He just molests her breasts no. or whatever, and that's just it. Or okay, gets but, off on that, yeah, or whatever. There's yeah, no impregnation. So there's no uh, uh, sexual intercourse there. Oh, okay, I just said he molests her. Okay. I never so, said anything about sexual so intercourse. Do, I just okay, said so molest her. So stop, stop, so stop. Do we? So do we you need to ask me the question. On me, on me, on me. They don't know. How would they find out about it? Well, I mean, there's a lot of. I never said they would. Them. I just said, okay. given that illustration, so, someone can my, knock someone my, out, my, get the job my, done, my, stop. My, hey, my. Come on, come on. Wait, let's go. <laughs> What's going on here? He can't, he can't engage. He's making it very, very clear. Just answer. Like, I mean, it's sticking clear. He's... he's like, well, can we extrapolate this to something other than what you brought up? I go, no, it's clear, straight, clear as crystal here, and you can't answer it other than asking 50 other questions. You're not answering. Given your standard, that just happens. That event happens. No one knows about it. The author keeps his secret. He just okay, wants to get so his jollies off that way. I go, good. On your pain and pleasure scale, how is it morally wrong? Okay, so... You answer I have, that... I have a clarification saying, Okay, but there's nothing else here, bud. Well, Given your standard... Here. But how about we? How about we answer my clarification question, and then I will answer. Your I already did. Question. You did not. I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Pay attention, okay, skull. So yes, you don't yes, pay attention to things. Merely, how so can you twist we, things we, up? We, we, do we have a guarantee that the person? Yes. Um, who's yes. What, so Correct. No one finds out so about we, it. Okay, he keeps so a no, secret. So, he right, does this repeatedly to multiple women. Yeah, then I don't think it's objectionable. Right. right. I think that if you, in a hypothetical world where you had a guarantee that nobody would be harmed, it would not be objectionable. However, in the real world where we no, don't have a guarantee that nobody would be harmed, it's it is, so it's not wrong. So it's not wrong. Right. In it's not wrong even if people find out about, about it. So what? That doesn't right. make it wrong if people find out about it. Is it no. wrong in and of itself? Well, what? Yes, Omni. if people find out about it. Why is it wrong? And as a result, Look, of why is it wrong? It, given your play, okay. pains and pleasure standpoint, given your pains and pleasure standpoint, one outweighs the other. He gets more pleasure than any negative. There is no negative effects. This illustration goes against your utilitarian standard. You have no clue how to apply that your own standard to this illustration. So utilitarianism is a farce. It likes to parade itself as some, you know code to follow by but i go it's easily shreddable within what five minutes of bringing it up to you you've been squirming around this issue the entire time as soon as i brought it up we never heard a clear answer from him whatsoever so you can see that in action right there see bass now i got more he couldn't deal with the quantum distribution issue that's just one-on-one -on -one there okay that's just person to person not merely the egoist or just says mm -hmm. you know but the great majority says you ought not molest people in the Dow's chair when they're not down. Quick, quick question. So, Kiwi, you're talking about in the chat I'm uneducated, right? 